Uh, if you're familiar with uh, AI within N8N, uh, a, a bunch of this uh, will uh, be relevant for you in the, in the near future. Um, these are some of the um, uh, improvements that we've been working on uh, recently or that, we'll, uh, that we're working on right now. And so if you have an agent in uh, N8N, you're probably familiar with the chat trigger, right? That allows you to uh, uh, host a, a chat instance on your own website or try out typing in uh, N8N uh, itself. So I have a very simple AI agent here um, that is connected to, in my case, Claude. Uh, um, and then something that uh, agents do is talk to tools. And we had a couple of tools that were uh, already very useful. So HTTP uh, request tool, and you could call out to other um, uh, workflows and, and stuff. But we've been working recently on implementing other nodes that we already have as tools. So in this case, I, I picked two, like an Airtable uh, 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 node and a Telegram node uh, that, uh, that helps me, uh, for example, do uh, uh, approvals and stuff like that, if, if that would, <laughs> would work with the AI agent. Um, so this agent will uh, send me some information from Airtable, summarize that, for example, and, and do that. And uh, normally when I click the chat uh, button down here to start the chat uh, manual uh, testing procedure, it would overlay the chat model on top of the entire canvas. And that uh, didn't allow you anymore to see what was going on on the canvas. So what we've implemented now is a way to uh, get this in a, in a pane. So you can see the logs here and you can see the, the, your, your chat here. And so you still see your workflow at the top. So that means that when I run this, you can actually see uh, uh, what nodes it's uh, actually uh, uh, executing. So if I say here, uh, send me all the um, data uh, from employee with the name Mario to my telegram. And then uh, you see it will uh, start processing uh, the agent. It will process that again. And then uh, we'll, it, it took some data from the air table and it now send it to my um, uh, telegram, uh, uh, from, from my, uh, to my telegram messages. So I can see it here. This is an unread message. Here's the data for employee Mario. So I get, I get all these orders. Um, so um, that is all being done by this agent. And I can inspect that from the logs, uh, as you are familiar with, because it has already been there uh, before, but it was all overlaying uh, what was happening over here. You can still see the chat, what it, what it sent back. And one thing that we did to enable um, these nodes as tools is you need to send parameters to these tools, right? So uh, with the HTTP request, tool that has a very big form that you have to put in all the parameters and stuff like that. Um, what we did for uh, these nodes as tools was introduce uh, this uh, expression-based uh, uh, way of, of sending these, this data back and forth between the agent and the tool. And we call this the from AI uh, function. And that allows you to uh, put in the name of, of the parameter that you want to send uh, uh, to this tool uh, from the AI agent. And so there's uh, this, uh, this is how it works. You can, you can actually uh, set a description as well. If you have multiple of these uh, um, uh, placeholders, then that, this allows you to figure out uh, how to distinguish the, between them. So if you have employee name or a customer name, maybe that is something that uh, an agent might be confused about, so you can give it some extra description, you can give it a type, and you can give it a default value if it's not, uh, uh, not passed on. Most of the time, you'll just use the key uh, uh, for the placeholder name. So this is, uh, this is how that uh, works. Um, if you are ever working with memory and things like that, then you can also uh, do some stuff with, with a session here and, and things like that. Uh, Jelle? 
for this thing where you like define the employee name. Yep. Uh, it sort of looks similar as asking, like if you have a regular OpenAI node and you say like output in JSON and put the employee name in the blah blah. blah. Yeah. Is that similar? Or yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's also using the expression uh, uh, function of. Uh, so it's, it's basically part of the expression parser that, that we use, right? So, so we look for these from AI function calls uh, to both uh, figure out what we need to send to the agent to, to know what it needs to send back, but also to know where we then need to put that back into the parameters for these nodes. So it's, it's serving a dual purpose. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks. Any other questions so far? So th these are the two things that we've been working on hard uh, for the last couple of weeks. So that's these, these is a, a bunch of tools that you can now use. So, so it's, it's pretty big now. So you can use Airtable, Base Row, uh, a whole bunch of, of these uh, tools that you can now attach to your agents if you want. So if you use Notion a lot, you can use that. You, you can use Postgres, of course, uh, all these kind of uh, things. Um, uh, um, then there is some cool stuff coming, and um, so one of the things that my team is now working on is uh, evaluation. And evaluation is the thing that if you have a workflow and you want to make sure that the workflow keeps working while you change, for example, your your prompt, right? You want to know whether the responses are still made, still make sense. So what we what we're building right now is a way, very flexible way. For you to uh, uh, put in things like uh, uh, create a data set, uh, figure out how to actually test my workflow to make sure that it, it's consistent across things. And, and part of that is the executions annotation. So I have a, a bunch of uh, uh, executions here and I can give that a rating. I can say, for example, I think this is a good one, but this one is, is bad. And this will then factor in to the evaluation a feature that will that will will probably release early next year. So um, uh, this is this is what we've been working on uh, to do that. Yeah, Yella. It's an amazing feature, I think, and it looks a lot like Langsmith. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we we took inspiration from a bunch of places to figure out what we wanna uh, where we wanna. Uh, and, and like the current agents, they are based on Lang chain, right? Yes. And the, is that causing any issues potentially? Like when you so so the the question is, does using Lang chain and evaluation cause any conflict? Yeah. So no, I don't think so. Uh, Lang chain offers integration with Langsmith if you want, but we want to offer you a way to do it in your workflows because we want you to be able to test your workflows also not just with with Lang chain tools but also with any other uh, nodes that you have, right? So if you have just a normal workflow that you want to test whether it's doing, for example, the code node is, is producing the right code, right output and stuff like that, you could do that with, with our evaluation feature. Awesome. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it, as it will uh, look something, I will close this one. It will look something like this. You, you, it, it will probably change a lot because we're still workshopping the, the front end part of it. But you will be able to uh, uh, tag these uh, executions and know what, uh, what is in there. Um, uh, so you can then base your tests on that. So uh, you can set some metrics, for example, uh, uh, accuracy or uh, uh, appropriateness or, or things like that. Like, is, it, is the summary good enough? Uh, does it contain uh, the words on the bad list? Well, you know, stuff like that is what you could do in one of those evaluations lists. And if you set those relevance or coherence kind of metrics, you can eventually plot them over time. Interface all still in progress. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, uh, this, this is a very interesting feature that I think is going to help a lot of people move better uh, to production uh, with their workflows. Um, 
So, comments of like keep evaluating it when it goes in, into production. So, um, the ones that like even the models can sometimes change a little bit. Yes. So you, uh, we're thinking right now. For now, it's probably run once uh, when you run it manually the test. So, for example, if you change something, it will run. We're also wondering about like how do we make it in the interface correctly that you could, for example, run these tests every night, for example, or every uh, Sunday evening or whatever. Right, so uh, that is something that, that we're still thinking about how to, how to do that because especially if, if models change, you want to know about those. Yeah. Um, other things that we're working on, so, so I introduced these nodes as tools, that these service nodes that you can then use in your agents. Uh, the, the from AI syntax is not always very intuitive or discoverable, so we're now thinking about ways to help people discover that and, and work with them more easily so that you can easily configure the parameters that, that the agent needs to communicate with the tool uh, with. And so that, that, that those are tool tweaks, a whole bunch of small tweaks uh, coming, but especially on the sub-workflow tool, if you ever use an agent that needs to call a different workflow in N8N, that's what we call the sub-workflow tool, that's also going to uh, change uh, quite a bit, uh, especially in uh, things like creating a new sub-workflow. So right now you have to first create the new sub-workflow, then figure out the idea for that new workflow, and then copy it back into your agent tool. We're going to change that, make a button that allows you to create a new sub-workflow. Um, and then debugging is also a pain in the ass right now. So what we're doing is uh, adding ways to go to the sub-workflow execution from your logs panel. So if you have this agent and uh, you have this uh, uh, workflow tool, then you, you can click a button to immediately go to the execution of uh, that uh, sub-workflow. So that's basically uh, the overview of things that we're working on right now uh, and that are hopefully coming very soon. Some features like the, the evaluation uh, feature is quite a big one, uh, probably early next year. Um, the other stuff might even be next month. So, nah, questions? Maybe I have to understand incorrectly, but are the features you are now talking about, tool stuff, is that all AI stuff or also for the normal workflow? Huh. Yeah, so um, some of it is also uh, for normal workflows, like the evaluation, you could, you could do that without any AI component. We are building it right now for the AI community because we believe that evaluation is especially useful for things like uh, making sure that it stays consistent over time, uh, if you change a prompt that it doesn't break down uh, as much and things like that. That's why we're building it in a very flexible way because the, the flexibility needs to be there uh, uh, because uh, you might want to have an LLM as a judge, right? So that is something that, that we're looking into uh, from that angle. Um, also the sub-workflow tool, yes, this is mainly coming again from that AI agent stuff. Probably we're also implementing this in the normal execute workflow uh, stuff, yeah. We are, we are using a lot of sub-workflows. So. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. You already improved the, the interface for sub-workflow selection, right? So you don't yeah. no, no longer need to enter the ID of the workflow, but you can now select it from the yeah. list. Yeah, I don't know if you already saw that, but, but yeah, so, so previously you really had to copy the ID, uh, the ID for the sub-workflow, but now you can just go to, like, if, I, if it's from this database, it will already give you a drop-down list with, uh, with all the workflows. Yeah. That's already available now. I think already oh, since... Uh, first, but I'm yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, so look it up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, like, I, I think the evaluation thing is, like, absolutely massive. Because, like, one of the things that we've been struggling with is, like, with the trend build, uh, we have a group of AI agents, and then we have, like, AI who is testing those agents. Yes. And it's basically when the AI is talking to the AI, it generates a lot of data and we struggle to kind of like evaluate that. And you mentioned that then the, this evaluation would basically allow to have AI yes. analyze the discussions between our tester AI and the group of AI agents. Yeah, so, uh, so the question is basically do we uh, 
allow with this feature a way to evaluate a, a whole bunch of agents that are, <laughs> are working together. And so basically what's happening with the evaluation is that you get another workflow that's, that does the evaluation. But we do it in such a way that, for example, you can label these executions that will then be run through the original workflow, then you will uh, get the output from that will be passed to another workflow to actually test your workflow. So you can do anything that you want in that workflow, even very complex stuff, as long as there is coming out some sort of metric that says yay or nay, right? And so if you want to analyze that whole chain of agents, of course you can do that. Yeah. Okay, like so for instance, like if uh, we uh, have given the tester agent uh, questions that we know that like uh, our manager agent uh, should pass <coughs> on to like an FAQ agent who's like querying our database. Yep. And uh, then we would be automatically able to flag when uh, it has failed to produce an answer that we know it should be able to produce. Yeah, so you, so you can dig down into like the parameters that are, are being passed between agents and, and, and other agents. Uh, we, we're not going as far right now as to also allowing you to debug everything that's happening in a sub workflow. So you would probably need to build a test for your sub workflow separately, but you could test it end to end, right? You could test like, is something good coming out of my sub workflow? Because that is something that's, that's being present in your current workflow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if I have a specific question. And the food's here, so I'll be quick. <laughs> uh, th this problem of non-deterministic squishy stuff happening. Yeah. Interfacing with deterministic stuff. Yeah. That's your from AI called the air table that needs a parameter name. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, I, I don't understand test these workflows in a way that I can get it to improve. I'm building a, a, a rag, trying to query some documents. Yep. I want it to get better at answering. I understand from these presentations, I can put examples, I can improve instructions, but how do I measure that it's getting better? I need somebody to judge that it's getting better. Right. A reviewer. Yep. Is there any systematic way to improve it? So, so the, basically the question is uh, how to imp check if my changes to my prompts are improving the results, right? You, you could do that with that evaluation feature that's, that's coming then, right? So what you could do is say, I'm, I'm, I'm building another test agent. I put that in my test workflow that checks, okay, does it have the correct language? Is it answering the question that was asked? Things like that. Right? You could put that into that test framework and because it's squishy and, and like language stuff, an LLM is then again in a good position to, to actually test that. What you then want to do, and then this is not probably not gonna be in the very first version, but you probably also wanna say, okay, this was went in and this is what we actually wanted to see. And then you can actually test if your uh, prompting changes it towards more of the things you want to see and less of the things you don't want to see. So, yeah. I think uh, we're wrapping up here. Um, Just one small question? A small question. Very, very small, small question. Um, what about the privacy? We touched upon that question just before that. Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, there is a good chance we will be sending some sensitive data from the internal database. Any generic way to handle that? Yeah, you, you could use a self-hosted uh, uh, AI instance, right? You could, you could use Olama, we support that. We support changing the, the URL for OpenAI uh, uh, node. So if you have a self-hosted or, or an API that, that does it better, mm -hmm. then you can, you can use that. Yeah, especially if it's just simulating the OpenAI API then you can again uh, insert that. So, yeah. Food. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. <laughs>